Hello and welcome to this in-depth primer. In this video we'll be taking a look at painting with Indidu. We'll be covering all the most essential features. The first thing we should go over before starting painting is how to navigate and use the camera controls as well as going over the most used hotkeys. If you're used to Maya you should feel right at home as Frido uses Alt mouse navigation. Alt left mouse button orbits, Alt middle mouse button pans and Alt right mouse button dollies. The dolly and orbit are relative to where you click, orbiting or zooming towards and around the point in space where you click. The most frequent button you will probably use is the spacebar. This toggles the UI on and off. Also, pressing P switches between perspective and orthographic modes. This can be very useful when painting. You switch between the different angles using I, J, K and L on the keyboard. We'll go over more hotkeys and practical use later on in this video. First off I want to explain that there are three different ways of painting within the suite. The first is painting within the Dynamask editor, allowing you to edit the mask directly in 3D. The second is color painting, with which you can hand paint details in full RGB values. The final and third way is painting in Endu, where you can create your own normals in 3D directly on your model. We'll be going over color painting and Dynamask painting today, and cover Endu painting in an upcoming video. Let's load up a project and start painting. Let's take a quick look at the basic controls we'll be using when painting. All the brush manipulation controls are accessed by pressing B. B plus right mouse button adjusts the scale of the brush. B plus right and left mouse button adjusts opacity. And B left mouse button adjusts the rotation. To switch between the back and foreground colors, you can either use a slider at the top row or you can press X, just like in Photoshop. To switch between brush and eraser mode, click their respective icons, or press B for brush and E for eraser. So to start painting, you either enter the Dynamask editor or create a color paint layer. Let's start off by taking a look at mask painting. I'll create a new material that will act like suit. Also, I'll link it to the correct IDs. By holding C and Ctrl while clicking, I can link it to several IDs. Next, enter the Dynamask Editor. This reveals a new tab called Painting. And now you can start painting in 3D, it's as simple as that. But before we start painting, I want to load a mask preset. I'll also change the reflectance value to make it look like suit. Now we're ready to start painting, so let's take a look at some of the options you have in the Painting tab. The two most important features here are the Brush and Eraser tools. The Brush tool has your working grayscale, allowing you to modify the Dynamask by adding or removing information. To toggle between Shaded and Mask Preview mode, press M as in Mask. The eraser lets you erase information added by the brush tool. For example, if you add features and want to erase it, you'll only erase the information added by the brush tool, not the Dynamask. Now that we have the general spread of the suit, let's go in and add some more definition. I loaded a leakage brush, which will serve nicely as the directional detail. When stamping out details like this, disabling or enabling the normal align feature can be helpful depending on the geometry. What it does is that it aligns the brush along the surface normals of the mesh. I'll continue using various brushes to further define the suit material. By holding B and left mouse button you can rotate the brush, and by holding B and right mouse button you can adjust the size. I'm using the brush tool to add and remove features in the mask in combination with the eraser tool to remove changes made with the brush tool. Worth noting is that if you're zoomed out, the camera orbits around the model's pivot, whereas if you're zoomed in, it'll orbit around the part of the mesh directly beneath the cursor. There we go, let's accept the mask. Here's another asset I loaded up. I'm feeling pretty happy about him, but I want to bring a bit more life into him. I'll do this by using the color painting feature. Just like painting in the Dynamask editor, 
Color painting allows you to paint directly on the mesh, but in this case in full RGB. I'll start off by adding some red hues to his face, starting with his lips. When I paint, I prefer to use a low opacity and build up with each stroke. Next, I'll open up the brush menu. By dragging the top tabs, you can browse the different categories. I want something that works well on skin, so I'll lower the brush from the organic category. The brush you select is consistent through both the brush and the eraser tool. I'll open up the color swatch and select a red color. I'll also build up the saturation step by step, so I'll start with a low saturated color. You can also leave the color swatch open and place it wherever you want inside 3 do. I'm using a combination of the brush and the razor tools to get the result I'm after, alternating between the two for a nice, subtle build-up. Now I'll select a more saturated tone of red to further define the lips. Next, I want to work a bit with the gloss map. To make this easier, I can use a feature called Mask Using. Here I can select the map I want to mask with. In this case, I'll go into the gloss map and select Albedo. What this does is that it lets me only paint inside the boundaries of where I painted in the Albedo map. I'll paint using a pretty bright value, letting me add a bit of sheen to the lips. You can look through the different maps of the project by using the number keys. I'm toggling between PBR, Albedo, and Gloss a lot in this project. You can also select which map to preview by using the drop down next to Show Mask. That looks good. I'll move on to adding some red to other areas of his head as well. I do this by clicking the Albedo tab. It's really starting to take shape now. Let's just do some final tweaks and then move on to adding some purples as well. Finally, let's add some yellow to his forehead. Alright, I'm happy with this. Let's exit color paint mode by clicking the icon on the color paint layer. Like with any layer, you can adjust the opacity and blending mode. I'll reduce the opacity slightly to make it a bit more subtle. There we go. That really made a huge difference. Feels a lot more alive now. Let's go back to the previous project to take a look at painting in orthographic view. You access the orthographic view by pressing P on your keyboard. The camera will snap to the closest angle to the perspective camera. Next, let's load a brush. In the brush menu you can access a wide array of parameters for the brushes. If you are familiar with Photoshop's brush system, you should feel right at home here. For this detail, I'll mainly use spacing and size, but let's take a look at the different options available. 
In the Shape Dynamics menu, you can change Size Jitter, Angle Jitter, and Roundness Jitter, along with relevant modifiers. You can also set how you want to control these settings, be it via pen pressure, tilt direction, and so on. Under Transfer, you can modify the Flow Jitter, the Control, and the Minimum Flow. I want to create some sort of sci-fi pattern on the front of the ship, so I'll find an interesting shape in the brush menu. After adjusting the size and orientation, I click out a stamp, and by holding shift and clicking out the next stamp, I get a linear stroke between the two clicks. Now here comes a cool part. By pressing shift, control and U, the last stroke I did will get repeated, but will do so with the new brush settings. There we go. Let's rough it up a bit so it fits in better. I'll just use the eraser at low opacity and start chipping away at it. Perfect. Let's take a look at another couple of useful features. Paint through thin geometry and proximity. Paint through thin geometry does exactly what it says. It lets you paint through thin geometry onto the underlying surface. And the proximity slider allows you to control the allowed distance to the underlying surface. I really hope you learned something from this tutorial. We'll be covering more of the features in Quixel Suite 2.0 in upcoming videos. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.